darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy out When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand in shame
Good morning, Apex Church family and friends. What a joy and privilege it is to be with you today. We never take for granted the fact that we can come into your home. And I love the fact that we are having church together. The Bible tells us this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. And I really want us to lean in. I believe that God's going to speak to us today, regardless of the week you've had, regardless of the challenges you've faced. I believe that this is a time that we have together as family and friends. Hey, we'd love to know where you're watching from, especially if you're out with the Peterhead area. Would you get that in the chat? Because we have people that would love to connect with you. And Apex uh, Church, please get a, hey, it's good to see you this morning. Welcome, church. I, I love the way that you guys are responding. And I just think that that's what community is all about. I know that we can't currently all be in the building, but I love the fact that we can all have church together. And can I just say that communion is going to be directly after worship, so that gives you time to go and make sure that you have your juice, your bread, your crackers, all prepared and ready to go. Well, I want to read one of my favorite scriptures to you. It's from the book of Habakkuk. That's in the Old Testament. It's chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. And listen to what we read. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, Though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in my God, my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. I love that. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. That's intentionality. That's making a decision. That's maybe I've had a challenging week or a challenging month. That means that perhaps things aren't working out as you thought they would or as you would like them to, but you're still making a declaration. You know what? Regardless of my circumstances, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. So I really want to encourage you right now as we prepare to sing together, make that decision, whether you're in your living room, your kitchen, wherever you're watching today. Would you make that decision? Would you agree with me? I will rejoice in the Lord. You know, when it comes to that whole thought of rejoicing, it's not only when things are going good. You know, the truth is, anyone can sing when the sun is shining bright, when everything's working well, when everything's coming together, everything's clicking. But it takes faith that when you're going through a dark night, a troubling time, it takes faith to get a song. I want to encourage you. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. So come on, would you stand with me if you're comfortable with that? And would you purpose right now that we are going to join together as we praise to, and lift up the name of Jesus.
die and sing we can hear the wind blowing 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 move upon our praise sons and daughters sing we can hear the wind blowing 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 never coming to prophesy and sing we can hear the wind blowing 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 move upon the place the sons of God are sweet we can hear the wind blowing blowing we need a fresh wind the fragrance of heaven pull your spirit out pull your spirit out our holy anointing the power of your presence pull your spirit out pull your spirit out we need a fresh wind we need a fresh wind the fragrance of heaven pull your spirit out pull your spirit out our holy anointing the power of your presence pull your spirit out pull your spirit out there is a king seated among us let every heart
a king. There is a king. His name is Jesus. I wonder, is he king over your life? Does he have lordship over your world? Is he your master? Is he your savior? Do you take directions from him? Do you receive wisdom from the Holy Spirit who wants to speak into our life and guide us and direct us? I am so glad that I can say today that there is a king. His name is Jesus and he is my king. We're going to pray right now. I don't know if you have any prayer requests. If you do, why don't you get that in the chat and we will come into agreement with you. I believe in the power of prayer. Apex Church believes in prayer. And I love when the Bible tells us if two or three come into agreement on anything, it shall be done. And I'm coming into agreement right now with you that whatever is happening in your world, that our God will begin to minister. So Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you that it is that name that is above every name. I thank you that there is power in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray for everyone listening to my voice right now. I pray that right into homes that they would experience the presence of the living God and that they would know that the Holy Spirit is moving in this moment. Heavenly Father, I know that at Abex Church there are many people that they really need miracles right now. I'm thinking of Alan Ritchie in Fraserburgh. Alan, I'm praying for you. I'm thinking of others that have received bad news this week. I'm thinking of those that are struggling majorly with health issues. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that you would move into every situation. Father, I pray that the encouragement that comes from your word would speak and penetrate our heart right now. That the weak would be able to say, I am strong. And the poor would say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done. So, Father, into every situation, I speak peace. I speak hope. I speak faith. I speak the blessing of God for everyone who is sick and needs a touch, for every prayer request that has come our way, for every challenge that people are facing. And, Lord, I know there are several people I've spoke to recently that are just looking for direction for their future. Father, I'm so glad that you direct our paths, that we're not left trying to find our own way, but you guide us and you direct us. So right now, Lord, for, for those that are seeking that direction of the Spirit for the next step, the next season in their life, I am asking God, would you speak right now? Lord, for those that are feeling anxious, I speak peace. I speak the peace of God that passes all understanding. For those that are confused, Lord, I am praying a soundness of mind. For those that are fearful, we speak faith. And Lord, I am believing that by the time this service is done, that people will get off of their couch feeling refreshed and renewed because we have been in your presence with your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, if you agree with me, why don't you say amen? Well, we're going to go to communion right now. And what a joy it is, as always, to prepare our hearts to come before that throne of grace and receive his mercy. I'm so glad for Jesus. I'm so glad for his forgiveness. I'm so glad that I don't have to work out my salvation. I said that last week. I'm so glad that it's not according to my human intellect or wisdom, but it's truly faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Well, have you ever faced disappointment? Have you ever faced challenge? Have you had to deal with a circumstance that you thought was going to turn out another way? And, and maybe right now that's you and, and your faith level is a little bit low. Well, you are in the company of what the Bible calls the two that were on the road to Emmaus. We find their story in Luke chapter 24. Let me just give you context. They have left Jerusalem. They're sad. They're disappointed. Why? They have just seen Jesus crucified. The one that they thought was the Messiah. The one they thought was going to redeem them from the Roman oppression. The one that they were waiting for. Everything they had seen, everything they had heard, led them to this thought. He is the Son of God. But they've just seen him placed on a cross. Now their hearts are heavy. And the Bible says they're walking away from Jerusalem. They're walking away with the carrying their disappointment. Maybe that's you right now. You've, maybe this week you've had bad news, a bad report, something that's brought disappointment or challenge, something that you thought was going to turn out completely different. And you know, it's so easy to walk away from the promises of God and total trust in God because circumstances pushing you down. Now, as these two are walking towards Emmaus, we're told it's about a seven-mile journey, Jesus comes alongside them. They don't realize that it's Jesus. They, they don't understand who it is. He does not reveal himself to them. He asks the great question, what manner of conversation this is that you are having, that you're so downcast, I can see that something's not good. And they sort of respond, are you the only one that doesn't know what's happening. Jesus continues on that journey with them and he begins to open up the scriptures. And as he begins to open up the scriptures and has conversation with them, it seems like that seven miles just passes in an instant. Jesus, as they begin to arrive at Emmaus, he makes us as if he's moving on and they ask him, no, the night, it's getting late, stay with us. The Bible then says these incredible words. Verse 28, as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going further. But they urged them strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Beautiful. What a thought. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it. Does that sound familiar? He's at the table with them. He takes the bread. He gives thanks and he breaks it and he began to give it to them. Listen to this, verse 31. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? When were their eyes opened? When did they move beyond their disappointment? When did they see Jesus for whom he was? The Bible says that when he began to break the bread and give it to them. I am praying right now, as we have communion together, that regardless of the sadness of your heart, the disappointment of life that perhaps some of you are facing, the challenges of health, the things that maybe are getting you down right now that would cause you, not purposely, not intentionally, but maybe you've just got your eyes off of Jesus. I am praying that as we break bread together, oh my friend, may your eyes be open again. May you get a revelation that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. May you see him as the resurrected Savior. May you see him as the one who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or even think. May you see him greater than every circumstance you're dealing with and every oppression or fear or whatever is coming against you right now. I, my prayer is this, may your eyes be open and may you see Jesus. So Father, as we break bread, I'm asking right now for something supernatural to happen in homes. I'm asking that the scales would be removed from our eyes. Lord, maybe we're looking for at the wrong thing. Maybe we're letting the disappointment of we thought 
the things that haven't worked out according to our plans or our desires. And I may be right now, Lord, they're weighing heavy in our heart. But Father, I'm believing that in the name of Jesus, that eyes are going to be opened. A revelation again that he is the Christ. He's my Savior. He's my Master. He is able. That's the God we serve. Let us break bread together. So come on, take that bread, that cracker, whatever it is that you use. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ broken for us. And now in like manner, we take the simple juice that signifies the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus so thankful we're so blessed we're so privileged and we're so honored that we can come around your table and know that we belong to the family of God Amen well I don't know about you but I have so enjoyed this sermon series Friendology the study of friendships Last week, Pastor Dan spoke such an encouraging word from, once again, Luke chapter 10 on the Good Samaritan. And he really encouraged us that we would develop a culture of encouragement. I love that thought when he says, hey, we can be that person that makes a difference in someone's world. And he used the example of Barnabas, who was known as the son of encouragement. I don't know. What about this week? Have you been an encouragement? Have you encouraged someone? Well, hey, maybe this is your chance. Why don't you pick up that phone? Yes, the pastor is telling you you can pick up your phone in church. And come on, text someone or WhatsApp someone and just speak a word of encouragement, a word of faith, a word of, hey, may you be blessed in Jesus' name. You know what? That's what a good friend does. Well, we are delighted that today that Jennifer Sangster is going to come and she's going to continue this series. I am so excited about the word of God that she's about to bring. Can I ask you, would you be an encouragement to Jennifer, not only as she comes, but as she shares the message and the talk that God has put in her heart, would you encourage her as she's going through the talk? Would you get that in the chat? You can say, amen, that's good, Jennifer. Something that resonates within your heart and your spirit. But let's get ready right now. And and we maybe don't say this too often, but even at home, you know, in, in person, we always say, hey, let's take some good notes. I know that there is so much that is said. Sometimes it's hard to catch it all first time through. And of course, I guess you have the benefit that you can watch this in replay. But there's something I believe very helpful that when we write something down. So perhaps you need to get your notebook out and your pen and note down these good points. You are going to be blessed right now as Jennifer comes to share Friendology, the study of friendships. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service today. We're so hope that you've been enjoying the Friendology series so far. Today, we're going to be looking at the book of Ruth and the relationship and friendship between Ruth and Naomi. So let's talk mother-in-laws. I'm sure some of you right now are glad that you're watching from home. Having a mother-in-law myself, Dorothy has and continues to be such a huge blessing to me. But when reflecting back over our relationship and how it established, it's clear to see that we started out as friends. You see, long before Stephen and I started dating, I was friends with his sister. And we would often be there during the week or the weekends with youth. And we started our relationship as friends and we built on that over the years. And that's where I can see now what we have, that trust and loyalty and how she treats me as her own. Let's start today with um, Ruth chapter one, from verse one. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech, his wife was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. 
they married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Kilion also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. And let's note here that the family had left Bethlehem. There was a famine there, and they'd moved to Moab, a foreign country to them. The other note here is that after Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, her two sons married Moabite women who had different beliefs from them and were foreign. They had lived here for around 10 years, and during that time, Naomi, Ruth, and Orpah, the two daughters-in-law, it doesn't describe what their relationship looked like, but that relationship would have grown over that period. But we'll see further on in the chapter of the bond that Naomi and especially Ruth had established. From verse 6, when Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. We read here that they all started out on that journey together. And then we read that Naomi gave them advice. Have you ever received advice from your mother-in-law? Let's see a show of hands. I'm sure you know the next question. Did you follow that advice? We have probably all received advice from many people, not just our mother-in-law, but they always seem to get labelled as advice givers. I'll be a mother-in-law twice over in the near future, and I'm already telling myself to keep quiet. Advice is a tricky one. We are all able to give advice, often too quickly, offer what we think would be the right solution because it fits with us and our thinking. But do we like receiving advice? This is where we need to have a little bit of discernment. We can receive that advice graciously and say, yeah, okay, I can see what you're saying, but then come to your own, own decision for something that sits right with you. So when Naomi tells them to go back to their mother's home and that she wanted the Lord to show them kindness, just as they had shown to Naomi and their husbands, we see a heart that wanted the best for our daughters-in-law. Reading from verse 9. Then she kissed them goodbye and they wept aloud and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait till they grow up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters, it's more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand is turned against me. At this they wept aloud again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or turn my back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When we got married, we got an embroidered picture that has that last verse on it, um, where you, that your people will be my people, where you go, I will go. And that was just, the beginning of our relationship together as man and wife, that we were committing to each another. We were committing to both following God and putting him first in our lives. This emphasized the journey that Ruth had been on in her relationship with Naomi. Remember that Ruth was a Moabite, a foreigner, and what she says to Naomi here depicts the depth of friendship and relationship she had built. She said that she wanted, Naomi wanted the best for her daughter-in-laws and felt that returning home was the best option for them. They would have a better future at home than they would with her. For now, Orpah returns to go home. But why did Ruth stay? 
these two had established something special. Ruth saw something special in Naomi. It's said in verse 14 that Ruth clung to Naomi. Have you ever had one of that times with a toddler when you're heading out the door and they cling around your leg or they're hanging around your neck because they don't want you to go out? It's said that Ruth clung to her. These, the bond that they had built was so special. They had been building this for over 10 years. She was saying to Naomi, I'm with you. And when we look at the personalities, the definition of personality is a combination of characteristics or qualities that form an individual's distinctive character, nature, and temperament. Ruth and Naomi's relationship had gone to the next level. Naomi had good qualities that Ruth was learning from and gleaning from. And an important theme that we're reading here as well is the loyalty between Ruth and Naomi. She was staying by her side no matter what. Ruth was accepting Naomi's God as her God. And God wants his people to be recognized by others because of the love they have for God. People need to see Jesus in us. Ruth's words of, wisdoms are a good, of wisdom are a good reminder. If we love others and follow our heart in the way we treat everyone, it's hard to go wrong. Ruth sees something in Naomi and has lived with her example for so many years and wants to choose to go with Naomi. That's a great example of church right there. And then we're going to continue further on in the passage. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them, and the woman explained, exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So Naomi returned to, from Moab, accompanied by Ruth, the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. So this was the beginning of a beautiful part of their story. They arrive in Bethlehem, which we remember Naomi and her husband had come from here. God always takes us to where we need to be. So Naomi moved from a foreign land due to a famine, gained two daughters-in-law, lost a husband and two sons, and here was Naomi and Ruth entering Bethlehem and people recognizing her immediately. They exclaimed, can this be Naomi? She was known, she'd been remembered. Naomi's meaning of her name is pleasantress. She tells them to call her Mara because she felt bitter that she'd returned empty because she'd had a rough time. Ruth was a foreigner who dedicated her life to her mother-in-law and her mother-in-law's faith even when she saw nothing in it for herself. But because of our faith and our virtuous character, if we read on, we see how God blessed and provided her with a wonderful husband. God had taken them on a journey that would bless them. There's a book called Jesus in Every Page, and it demonstrates that through the Old Testament, we can see Jesus actually on every page. And what we read in Ruth here is a symbolic foretelling of Christ's relationship to humanity. We could read all the books of Ruth, but it would take a few sermons to get through. So much lessons to learn and to grow from. But this has just been a small taste today to see the relationship between mother-in-law and daughter-in-law and how it worked. Here on the screen, we have a quote from John Maxwell, and it says, people may hear your words, but they feel your attitude. We've heard today that Ruth heard and felt Naomi's attitude and what had attracted Ruth to stick with Naomi. She said, I'm with you, I'm sticking with you. Have you got someone who you would say, I'm with them, maybe because of their character or kindness, maybe because of their popularity, maybe because you partnered with them at school because you knew they were one in the race. I never ever got picked for that. Proverbs 18, 24 in the message says, this friends come and go, but a true friend sticks to you like family. How true is this? This is such a powerful verse. Friends do come and go. 
the friends you had maybe years ago are not the friends you have now. But as we mature and see the real qualities and genuine relationships and how we can grow in them, the power of a good friendship is something we should all be striving for. A, to be that friend and B, to receive from the friend. The most powerful friendship we can ever receive is that of Jesus. And that's where we are, what we are reading in that verse. It starts as a friendship. We get that nudge. We hear that gospel appeal asking if you want to have Jesus in your life, if you want to accept him. And when we do, we need to get to know him. We start at the beginning of a beautiful friendship as we learn who he is and what he can do in and through us. Acts 4 verse 12 says, There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be save, saved. No one else can save us. No matter how good our friendships or relationships are, they can't give us eternal life, only Jesus. So what do your friendships, relationships look like this morning, your mother-in-law's relationship? I know it's not always fluffy clouds and roses. There are times we get stressed, we get annoyed or even angry. But are we going to strive to be more like Ruth and be more like Naomi when we have Jesus living on the inside? When we make that choice to say yes to him, are we going to try and say, I want to have that powerful relationship with Jesus because he's got everything that I need. He's got everything to help me. How much more growth will we see in our hearts, in our homes, in our workplace, in our neighborhood? in our churches. Jesus, when we have Jesus in our lives, the power of friendship we have and the love within us is immeasurable. We have an overflow and we've got his love and forgiveness flowing through us and spilling out. We said yes to him because we see the qualities in him that we yearn for. When we have his forgiveness, we can live free. When we have his peace, we can live peacefully. When we ask for his advice, advice and prayer, we can listen and act accord in accordance to his will. When he shows his love for us, we can love others because of what he's done for us. He was a perfect sinless man, and yet he died on a cross for us. The most selfless act that sometimes we as Christians even sometimes struggle to comprehend how he could do that even for me. And one day, because of his forgiveness and our choice to follow him, we will see him again in glory. And I'm going to leave you with this verse this morning. John 15, verse 17. So this is my parting command. Love one another deeply. We have spoken about giving advice this morning. And this verse is one of the best pieces of advice. In fact, it's a command that Jesus gave us. Do you seek this morning a relationship with God? Are you looking for a powerful connection with him. Are you going to say to him this morning, I'm with you. I surrender my life to you. Will you come into my life and help me? Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, this morning I want to choose you. Lord, I need you in my life. I need your forgiveness. I need you to come in and do a work within me that I can have a true and loving relationship with you. So Lord, this morning I say I'm sorry for the sins I've committed. Lord, I pray that I can come now alongside you and walk with you and learn from you. Lord, and I turn my life wholly and completely over to you. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Come.
an encouragement message. Thank you, Jennifer. I tell you what, don't know about you, but, but I love that story. I love the story 
of Ruth. There is so much that we can glean. There is so much that we can learn. And thank you, Jennifer, for the time you've taken to put that together. I know that's been a blessing to you. Would you make sure you get that in the chat? I believe that as we look at Old Testament, New Testament, as we go through this series, I believe that God is challenging our hearts. He's certainly challenging me. I want to become a friend to others. Well, hey, I want to encourage you once again throughout this week. We have so many good things that are happening. Thank you for your continued prayer for Apex Community Cafe. We so appreciate what God is doing here. Just in Peterhead, we recognize the needs that there are, there are and, and we are so grateful that God allows us to, to make a difference in someone's world. We maybe can't change everybody's world, but I tell you what, we can change somebody's world. And I want to encourage you, would you please be in prayer for that ministry, pray for the team. They are so faithful on Wednesdays. And then Apex Church Family Online, Wednesday night, 8.30. Always an encouragement. Come on, it's community. It's the time that we can have some fun. Uh, as you see with Pastor Dan and myself, we, we really enjoy that evening together. And we jo enjoy being able to speak to you through the chat as well. And once again, we have some great guests that are going to encourage you, bless you, inspire you as we move forward into the things of God. Thank you for your continued generosity. I say this every week. Thank you for your kindness. You bless us. You are so faithful in your giving and helping us as a local church through the tithe and the offering to move forward in the plan and will of God. I'm not only talking about today, but I'm talking about our tomorrows. I believe that God has a great future for us. And I believe that God is positioning us and getting us ready. And you contribute to that. You help that. You are part of that by your giving. So thank you for doing that. The ways that you can give are once again coming up on screen. And whatever method you use, thank you so much. Well, I believe once again that God has spoken to us throughout this service I'm praying that you have an outstanding week. May the favor and blessing of God rest upon you. I'm praying that we are going to have phone calls from some of you saying, listen to what's happened. <laughs> Out of the blue, unexpected, suddenly moments, the Bible says. I am praying that you have a suddenly moment where you see the hand of God work on your behalf. Well, the team will sing us out. Look forward to seeing you next week. Please remember, 2 o'clock, the line's open, that you can book in again for our in-person service, 9.30 and 11.30. And, and please, if it's booked up, get on the waiting list. We are really working hard to make sure that everyone can get into our services somewhere along the journey. So don't miss that. 2 o'clock, the line's open. Please make sure you register for next week. Now, may you be blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. A prophesy and sing. We can hear the wind blowing, blowing, blowing.